Hello! The purpose of this video is to explain the basics regarding configuring mobile device management for use with Android and iOS devices within Zenworks for the first time. Setting up mobile device management starts with having a primary server in the DMZ, so mobile devices are able to communicate with the MDM primary regardless of where they are located. Mobile devices communicate with the Zenworks MDM primary over port 443 and require an SSL server certificate that is valid for no longer than two years. To begin, let's set a primary server to be an MDM primary. To do this, we can begin in the Modern Management section of ZCC. This can be done from any of the three sections of Managing Windows 10 Devices, Managing Android Devices, or Managing iOS iPadOS Devices. Click Add MDM Server, then click Add, and select one or more primary servers that need to be configured with the MDM role, and click OK. If you plan to use iOS devices, you will need to set up Apple push notifications. This allows iOS devices to be alerted when to communicate with the Zenworks MDM server. Under Modern Management, Managing iOS iPadOS Devices, select Configure APNs. From here, you will create a certificate request, filling in your Apple ID and other company details. You will also need your Customer Center credentials so Microfocus can sign the request. Once this is done, you will log into the Apple portal to upload the request from Zenworks for Apple to sign. Then you will download the signed certificate and import it into Zenworks. You can test the certificate at any time to ensure it is valid. If you plan to use Android devices, you will need to set up Firebase Cloud Messaging to allow Android devices to be alerted when to communicate with the MDM server. Under Modern Management, Managing Android Devices, select Configure FCM. The information you will need to configure this must be created in Google's Firebase Developers Console. Once connected to the Firebase Developers Console, you will create a new project and follow the prompts. This process may take some time. Next, you need to register your Android app within the project. Then you will download the Google Services JSON file to use within Zenworks. Select the settings gear beside the project and go into the project settings. Under the cloud messaging tab, the legacy cloud messaging API is disabled by default. This API needs to be enabled. To do so, you will need to select the three dots to the right of this option and go into the legacy Google Cloud Console. Here, you will enable this feature and then return to your project within Firebase. This legacy API key is what is used as the server key within Zenworks when enabling the Firebase Cloud messaging setting. You will upload the project JSON file that was downloaded previously. You can test the server key to ensure you have configured everything properly. It will show the key is valid at the top of the screen. If you experience issues with the connection, you may need to edit the Google Services JSON file to add the Firebase URL. Add the line as shown here using the project ID as the first part of the URL, followed by firebaseio.com. Saving this change and uploading the modified JSON file should allow the connection test to complete successfully. 
The next step when using Android in your environment is to set up the Android Enterprise subscription. This allows administrators to manage and secure applications on users' devices. There are two modes. Work Profile mode creates dedicated containers to separate corporate and personal data. Admins can only control the corporate side of the device. This is ideal for BYOD environments. The other mode is Work Managed. This allows the administrator to manage the entire device, thereby restricting the device for corporate use only. This process is currently for ZenWorks 2020 Update 2 and older. ZenWorks is making Android API changes that will modify this behavior in the future. Under Managing Android Devices, select Create Enterprise Subscription and follow the prompts. You will enter your Customer Center credentials. A pop-up window will appear to set up Android for Work within the Google portal. Follow the prompts and it will return you to ZenWorks to complete the setup. Select the users you wish to allow to set up to use Android Enterprise. Select the frequency with which the subscription will check for changes with Google. The default is 23 hours. After the Android subscription is created, an Android enrollment policy needs to be set up and assigned before users can enroll. Under Managing Android Devices, select Create Enterprise Enrollment Policy. Follow the prompts and give it a name. When assigning this policy, you need to ensure that it is assigned to the same set of users who are part of the user context associated with the Android Enterprise subscription. Both iOS and Android devices require a mobile enrollment policy be created and assigned to allow devices to enroll. Under either Android or iOS devices, select Create Enrollment Policy, follow the prompts, and give it a name. You will need to decide if devices will be set up as corporate or personal, or if users will be allowed to define this for themselves. Then determine if the device will be fully managed or be configured for ActiveSync only. ActiveSync only has very limited administrative control. You also need to choose the desired behavior when a device is unenrolled. Deleting the device would be necessary if you plan to re-enroll again in the future, because retiring it leaves a record in the database and will not allow it to be re-enrolled without deletion. This policy will also need to be assigned to whatever user group you wish to allow to enroll mobile devices into the environment. Other MDM configurations can also be defined, though they are optional and not required for enrollment. These include things like security and control policies, application management such as Apple's Volume Purchase Program, and Apple's Device Enrollment Program. ZenWorks can act as a gateway to relay incoming and outgoing email to devices using the ActiveSync protocol. The first step would be to add an ActiveSync server. ZenWorks supports Exchange and the GroupWise Mobility Server. You will need to define server, which is simply a name to identify this configuration, the address to connect to the ActiveSync server, the domain if necessary for your environment, and the port. Test the connection by adding credentials to authenticate to the ActiveSync server. Any credentials can be used here as they are not utilized for anything other than confirmation that a successful connection has been made. When you select the user source from the drop-down menu, the link to ActiveSync server is used to provide the user's email automatically onto the device. Once the ActiveSync server is configured, an email policy must be created and assigned to the users. Select Create Email Policy, follow the prompts, and give it a name. As with all policies, it must be assigned to the necessary users in order for it to be sent to the devices. 
If there are issues with email synchronization, even with a successful ActiveSync test, navigate to Users, select the user source, and then select Details beside the user folder. Here you can define ActiveSync specific details. Specifying the ActiveSync server is important if more than one ActiveSync server is defined in the environment. Specifying the ActiveSync server login attribute defines the attribute that needs to be used to properly authenticate to the system. For example, do users authenticate with their email address or their account name? Once these are properly defined, the email profile should load onto user devices successfully. This concludes the required and most common steps needed to configure MDM for the first time. For additional detail or optional features, please refer to the ZenWorks documentation.